Okay, so I'm in Notion, and yours will hopefully look a little different because there'll be a few more videos in here. Um, so I want to talk about the Arnold AI Clip Geo Shader. Um, and what it lets us do is take you know, these Boolean operations to extremes, like extreme complexity between the meshes um, that were previously too heavy or impossible uh, to do. So to kind of push this and, you know, play with kind of more interesting, more detailed meshes, I'm going to go to this website, 3dscans.com, uh, which is really neat. Uh, it's all uh, open source. A lot of it comes from uh, a museum in oh, a few different museums, actually, looking at this here. Um, and I'm going to pick this head thing. So I'm going to download that. And what you get, it's going pretty quick right now, is an STL file. Oh, so here I've downloaded it before. And cool enough, uh, Macintosh OS lets you see this file, even with kind of flat shading, kind of amazing. Um, so anyway, what I want to do is get that file uh, into Maya. So I'm fresh scene here. I'm going to go file, import, uh, wherever I downloaded it, which is in downloads, bearded man, STL, unzipped. Cool. And it says unrecognized file type. Ugh. So what's that about? Well, STL is um, a, a file type that is not included um, with the default plugin load in Maya. But one thing about um, Maya, as you've kind of seen already, is that it is kind of endless bit of software. So there are there's lots of functionality that you can unlock if if you need it. So where you find that kind of extra functionality among other places is in the plugin manager. All right, so that you can see like there's a lot of stuff that isn't turned on uh, by default, right? Um, yeah, like features and convert. I mean, look at all this stuff. It's crazy. So what I'm looking for, and a good kind of thing to do if you ever you're trying to import something and, it, and it's not working, is just look, do a little search. Ooh, STL translator, that looks good. So I can load it once, or I can turn on auto load, and then that'll become, become part of what loads every time I use Maya. Um, I don't do it too much, you know, and the more, pro you know, part of the reason that they're turned off is the more plugins you have loaded, and this is true of, of any software, uh, the longer it's going to take to start up. So you kind of want to just have what you need. So I'm going to turn on uh, loaded. Okay, close that. Now I'm going to go back and try again. Import bearded man. Go. And there it is. Okay. Now it is upside down <laughs> uh, and backwards. That might not be uh, what we want. Um, sometimes uh, geometry, when it's coming from other sources, is on different axes. So it's not something we've talked about much, but in Maya, the up axis is the Y. And that, that kind of makes sense to me because. You know, when I'm in processing or uh, Illustrator or Photoshop or After Effects in two-dimensional space, it's always in the X, Y axis. And then when I add three-dimensional space like into the frame, it's the Z. But there's other software, uh, notably like AutoCAD programs. Um, and this, this might be sort of inaccurate, but I like to think about it like those programs are designed around floor plans where you're looking down at the floor and doing the layout and then the Z becomes the up um, going from a floor plan to three-dimensional space. So sometimes you'll see depending on where what software was being used the the axes uh, flipping around. All right and that's just just the, the reality of things. So you know for example 
Uh, Blender, which is a like really cool software, um, uh, like another one I think you should kind of start to learn about as it's getting better and better, and it's open source, which is totally a positive thing for, for all of us. Um, the one thing I don't like about Blender is that Z is up, and I find that like just hard to get my head around because I'm just so used to uh, Maya and, and these other tools. All right, so I have this head. Um, what I'm going to do, if I look, the pivot points down there, that's so when I spin around the origin, the head's kind of, that's not so good. So let's, let's fix that. So to fix that, we go modify, center pivot, and that finds kind of the center of the volume. And then I'm going to snap that to the origin. All right. Then let's, let's orient this so that when we're facing forwards, this head is kind of looking at us. So I'm going to hold down J and do that. So now that's cool. And then I'm going to um, hit J again and spin it around. There we go. That's much nicer. And I actually, um, Yeah, that's pretty good. I actually would like for the kind of pivot to be the kind of base of the head so that it's not like kind of going through the floor. That's what's going to be useful for me. So what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to grab our pivot point, just like something we did right from the beginning. I'm hitting D. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> D. There we go. I'm move it down here. And then I'm going to hold down the Y axis and shift and hold V which is going to snap it to um, a vertex. Let's try that again. D. V. There we go. And then hit D again. And now it's over there. And then I'm going to snap to this, holding down X. Goodness. There. All right. And now I want this to be my default. So what I'm going to do is I don't want I don't want it when I zero this head out to go back to where it was before. I've I've basically fixed all that. So to kind of make it permanent, I go over here, freeze transformation. Yes, I want tra all this stuff, and then I hit apply. Then what I'm going to do is for a situation like this where you have a model that has tons of detail and is, you know, takes up file size and, and all that stuff, I'm going to treat this as a reference. So what I like, my little kind of lazy person convention is just to group the top node. Um, and then that way, if I, if every time I use a reference, I always use this group. When Maya goes to scale or manipulate the referenced object, it always looks for this group node, meaning that I can swap out different things after the fact. If I leave it bearded man, if I have a new reference and it has a different name, it's not gonna work, all right? So the group, all right, and then I'm gonna say save scene. And I probably have one of these already, yeah, bearded man. Let's call this bearded man, alt, all right. Then, when I go to my new scene, which is going to be my assembly scene where I'm going to play with my Clip Geo and all this other good stuff, I'm going to go create reference. Bearded Man, we'll do the alt one because that's the one we just made. I like use namespace 100%, and then I like to just put this ref thing. I don't know if that's best practices or what, but it works for me. And now. Um, if I save this file, it's going to be teeny tiny because it's just pointing to this original model. Um, and yeah, we, you know, we talked about references a little. Like, you know, let's say you're doing a, a car spot. You, you don't want to, like, load the car into the assembly scene every single time. That's nuts. Um, so, so references are, are awesome. And this, this mesh is actually, in, even though the that the edge flow is not non-existent. Uh, it's still like in good enough shape for, for what 
what I had planned for it. All right.